Standard 10 Mathematics Part 2 Coordinate Geometry In video number 18 In solving practice set problems Application Part 10 Now towards the next session in Coordinate Geometry in solving practice set problems, looking at the problem given at the board, find the ratio in which point T divides the line segment joining the points P and Q. So, let's find out what they have asked for. Given is line segment PQ, dividing it by a point T. What else is given in this problem, children? Point P, the coordinates are minus 3, 10. Point Q is given by 6, minus 8. As well as, we can see the difference over here. The coordinates of point T are also given by minus 1, 6. What is asked over here? We have to find out the ratio that is m is to n are the unknown variables left to be calculated. So definitely we will have to use over here again the section formula. But first let's assign over here as per the section formula the coordinates of point P as x1, y1. Coordinates of point Q will be assigned by x2, y2 and the coordinates of point P will be assigned with the variable x, y. We are supposed to calculate mn. What does the section formula say? Section formula is given by x is equal to mx2 plus mx1 upon n plus n and y is equal to m y 2 plus n y 1 upon m plus n. What are we supposed to calculate over here? We are supposed to calculate m is to n the ratio. So here let's use the first formula x is equal to m x 2 plus n x 1 upon n plus n. Let's substitute wherever possible. Is x given? Definitely minus 1 which is equal to m. Is the value of m given? No children. So m into x2 is given by 6 plus n is again unknown into x1 is given by minus 3 upon n plus n. Let's solve further mathematically. The first bracket m into 6 gives us 6n plus plus into minus inside the bracket is minus 3 into n is 3n upon m plus n. Let's transfer m plus n towards the left hand side of the equality sign. So we get minus 1 into the whole binomial that is m plus n which is equal to 6m plus into minus gives us minus 3n. Let's open the bracket at the left hand side. Minus into plus is minus. 1 into m you can just write it as m. Again minus into plus is minus. 1 into n is 1m which can be just written as n which is equal to 6n minus 3n. We have to calculate the value of m is to n. So let's logically take all the m values towards one side and the like values that is n terms towards the other. So we are left with minus m plus 6n becomes minus 6n when it's transferred from the right hand side to the left hand side. On the right hand side we already have minus 3n, minus n which is a like term, let's transfer it. So the negative value attains a 
positive value when you transfer it from either side of the equality sign. Let's solve the like terms to get an answer. Over here we have minus 1m minus 6m which definitely gives us minus 7m. Minus 1 minus 6 gives us minus 7. Over here minus 3 plus 1 minus 3 plus 1 gives us minus 2. So you are left with minus 2n. We have to calculate the value of m is to n. So let's cross multiply m. n is performing the operation of multiplication. When it goes on the other side, it becomes division. So you have m upon n which is equal to minus 2 as it is on the right hand side. Minus 7 is performing multiplication in the earlier step. So when you transfer it on the other side, division. You can see minus and minus gets cancelled. So you are just left with the value of m upon n which is equal to 2 upon 7. Or in other words you can say m is to n is equal to 2 is to 7. So this is what they had told us to calculate in this problem. Find the ratio. The so ratio which is given as m is to n. We have calculated and it leads to an answer which is equal to 2 is to 7. So what did we see in this case children? We saw that we used the section formula. But did we have to use both the formulas? No definitely. We used only one formula from the section. Formula that is x is equal to mx2 plus nx1 upon n plus n to calculate the given ratio. Even if in this case we would have used the other formula y is equal to my2 plus ny1 upon m plus n by substituting the given values y1, y2, m and n then we would have also reached to the same value that is m is to n is equal to 2 is to 7. Now moving on further children, let's see. Point P is the center of the circle given in this diagram as you can see and AB is the diameter of the same circle. Find the coordinates of point B if the coordinates of point A and P are given as 2 minus 3 and the coordinates of the point P are given with the value minus 2, 0. So we here children we know that for any circle the diameter that is AB over here given as AB point P which is the center of the circle will always form the midpoint. The center of the circle always is the midpoint of any diameter that you draw. So over here we have to calculate the coordinates of the other distinct point B which also forms the diameter. So over here which formula will you use? Definitely the midpoint formula because P is the midpoint as P is given the center. P is the midpoint of the diameter AB for this particular circle. But before that let's assign the values. So A is represented by x1, y1. B which is unknown can be represented by x2, y2. And P which forms the midpoint as it is the center can be assigned the value of x, y. So how do we write the midpoint formula? The midpoint formula is given by x is equal to x1 plus x2 upon 2 and y is equal to y1 plus y2 upon 2. So what are we supposed to calculate over here? We are supposed to calculate the coordinates of point B that is x2 and y2. So to begin with the first formula let's use x is equal to x1 plus x2 upon 2. Let's substitute what is the value of x minus 2 which is equal to x1 is given with the numerical value 2 plus x2 is unknown so that is x2 upon 2 2 
is performing division. Let's transfer it on the other side. So, it becomes multiplication. On the right hand side, you are left with 2 plus x2. Minus into plus gives us minus. 2 to the 4, which is equal to 2 plus x2. We are supposed to calculate the value of x2. So, this plus 2, let's transfer it towards the left hand side of the equality sign as it is performing addition. When it goes on the other side, it will become subtraction, which is equal to x2. Thus, x2 is equal to minus 4 minus 2, that is minus 6. So, over here, we have got the x coordinate of point B, which is equal to minus 6. Let's move on further to calculate the y coordinate of point B. So, again, the value of y is given by 0, which is equal to y1. Let's check out what is y1. Minus 3 plus, we know we do not know the value of y2. So, let's write it as it is. Upon 2. Taking 2 on the other side, 2 is performing division. When you transfer it on the other side of the equality side, definitely it attains a operation of multiplication, which is equal to minus 3 plus y2 is left as it is. 0 multiplied by anything is 0, which is equal to minus 3 plus y2. We are just supposed to calculate the value of y2. So, minus 3 goes on the other side. So, 0 plus 3 will give us y2. 0 has no value. So, it can be discarded. So, you are just left with the value of y2. That is y2 is equal to 3. So, here we have got the value of y coordinate of point B. Thus, we see that whatever is asked in the problem there was the coordinates of point B. That is x2, y2. x2 is minus 6 and y2 we have got as 3. So, we can write therefore the coordinates of point B are B into bracket first the x coordinate that is minus 6 and y we got as minus 3. So, what did we use children over here? We just used the midpoint formula. Why did we use the midpoint formula? Have they given that point P is the midpoint of AB? Definitely not. But looking into the problem, they have said that point P is the center of the circle and AB is the diameter. So, we know children over here that the center of a particular circle always forms the midpoint of the diameter. That means AP is congruent to PB. Thus, we could use the midpoint formula to calculate the value of the unknown variables.